Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome, friends. You know, to forgive as Christ forgave is humanly one of the most difficult instructions given throughout the New Testament, and yet it's the key to our freedom. Today's guest is no stranger to the issues of abuse, abandonment, and victimization, yet through forgiveness and God's healing grace, he is no longer a victim, but a victorious conqueror of the lies that once held him. Mark Soresby is an author, speaker, and a pastor. And Mark, we are so honored to have you here to tell your incredible story. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be with you. Well, I would love for you to just begin to tell our audience uh, some of your story and how um, God really met you in the deepest pit of your pain. Tell us about some of the things that you went through as a child. Sure. Unfortunately, I grew up with lots of hurt, pain, neglect, and sorrow in my life. I was an abused child from the ages of seven till I was 14. My mother would marry a man that was 20 years her younger. And he would come into our life and he would be uh, my abuser. He abused many in many different ways, but I was the target of the ugliness of sexual and physical abuse. See, I was born from an affair. I did not know my father, my birth father, my my, uh, you know, my father, but, uh, but the pain that my mom walked through brought her to marry this man. And this man would come into my life and abuse me and, and hurt me and take everything from me. He would steal from me, my dignity, my value, my mm -hmm. innocence. He would take all those things. And that's just kind of where I lived all those years. I lived in that pain. I lived in that sorrow. It was just the atmosphere, the the oxygen in the room that I lived about, it consumed me and tried to steal everything from me. I was burnt. I was stabbed. I was mm. sold to others for their sexual pleasures. And it was oh. just a real difficult and ugly time being a child and not understanding all that was taking place, not understanding yeah. all that was happening in my life. So uh, so those were the, the reality that I lived in, being neglected by my family, uh, also being abused by my abuser and bullied at school. The pain was just always about me and around me. And that's just kind of where I lived and how life I thought was all the time. I felt guilty. I felt ashamed. I felt like I did something wrong. And that left me broken. That left me mm -hmm. hurt. So mm -hmm. that's a story full of pain and ugliness, but mostly full of that abuse that so many have gone through. Yeah. You know, this is an issue that's, uh, I have so much passion for this issue and something that, uh, well, really because of my own story as well, but uh, the issue of trauma with children and how they are so not equipped at such a young age to be able to handle that trauma, uh, especially when it comes from people who should be our protectors, um, help us to get inside of the mind of a child and you know what is it that that the child is having to process and and how does that make a child feel why does shame begin to wrap uh, uh, around the identity of of this developing well, child sure well now i think the term that people use is grooming so as a mm -hmm. child you're groomed you're mm -hmm. groomed to take this uh, hurt this pain as the abuser grooms you he grooms you also saying it's your fault yeah. You know, stuff like you made me hit you. You made this happen. And it's a slow but ugly process of being groomed. And mm -hmm. that grooming it takes that young mind that's undeveloped. It's immature. It, it's just surviving, looking for direction and wisdom for those who love them and leaves you empty. So as a child, you build a system, a system mm -hmm. to survive. But of course, it's not a full system because it's it's from your 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 adolescence. Your your mm -hmm. your mind hasn't developed yet, and in that system, you're just still going from day to day trying to survive with this negative that around you all the time that's being reinforced by the abuser. The abuser is reinforcing that 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 lie that he first spoke to me, uh, that grooming that took so well. So it's kind of a mixture. Of, mm -hmm. of, of hurt, pain, fear, insecurity. And, the, and again, the abuser is just putting it all on you. So when my abuser came into my life and he began to rape me as he began to stab my body, he definitely said, it's your fault. 
And if you tell, they'll be mad at you. And again, mm-hmm. now as an adult, you realize those things aren't true. That was they were the one that were in the wrong. But as a child, yeah. you don't understand that. And then because there's enablers for the abuser and because there's neglect and pain in the adults that are supposed to be leading you, uh, you're kind of left alone. Yeah. And then it's reinforced by the voice of the enemy. Uh, That's right. you, you spoke to the issue of insecurity. And, you know, children who are loved and groomed in a positive way, they gain confidence. But the child that's abused and abandoned and neglected, uh, there is no confidence. There's, they're filled with insecurity. And uh, how did you come to a place where the Lord began to change the narrative and help you to find the courage to move forward and to acknowledge that pain so that you could grow and and not be marginalized by it any longer. Well, that's the story. That's the story Mm -hmm. I I wrote in my book called Forgiven the Nightmare. That's the journey that in a lot of ways I'm still on. Uh, What happened in my life is that I was waiting for the day for it to all go away, that I'd wake Mm -hmm. up and there'd be rainbows Mm -hmm. and butterflies and everything was great. And in a lot of ways that day's never come, but what came was Mm -hmm. Christ became bigger. The word of God, the spirit of God, the love of God became bigger than the lies of the enemy. It's true Mm -hmm. that I was abused. I don't, I can't forget that. I I don't ignore that was a part of my life, but God became bigger. And that's where the journey Mm -hmm. started. I call my book, Forgiven the Nightmare, but I didn't start this journey off saying, Lord, help me to forgive. I started this journey saying, Lord, I want more of you. And seeking Mm -hmm. me first, the kingdom of God, seeking God and the reality of who he is. He brought me to a place to learn how to forgive. So Mm -hmm. seeking God, the forgiveness was the overflow, was the fruit of that. But again, Mm -hmm. it was not simple. It was not easy. I had challenges. I had doubt. I wanted to throw in the towel more than once. I was the I was the one that he left the ninety nine for many, many times. So it's an honest journey of how to find peace and victory. And it's an honest mm. journey that that's what we want to tell. There was a real abuse in my life. Yeah. I was traumatized. It stole from me everything. I found Christ and by precept by precept, step by step, God was able to give me back as I learned to die to self and live for God. Amazing. And, you know, one of the things that uh, the Lord showed me in my own journey was that it's through these woundings of the soul that the enemy comes in to hijack our identity, which really the origin of our identity is the the image of God. We were all created in the image of God and he hates that. And I think that he targets young children often that are marked for God. But, you know, people, the reason I say this, Mark, is that people would hear you say that and say, why would you have to deny yourself? I mean, you have a right to your pain. And because the world's system of thinking is, you know, you've got to put your, your fists up and you've got to protect yourself. It's about self-preservation. But what the lie of the enemy does is to try to turn us against God sure. in that pain and then not trust him. But what you're talking about here, and I'd love for you to unpack this a little bit more, is that in the, the journey of surrender and letting go and saying, God, I see that you were with me and you preserved me even in the depth of my pain and the depth of the abuse and you are pulling me out of the wreckage and you have a purpose. Let's go there for a minute and help people understand that Jesus is the hope on the horizon and it's all about shifting our attention. Let's talk about that. And that's exactly, first I want to say, I felt all those expressions. I felt anger. I felt I wanted Mm -hmm. to be self protecting and and every expression that the flesh feels i felt i shook my fist more than once in heaven i asked god why if you were real why didn't you i all those expressions Mm -hmm. and questions i asked so what i share to you that i i've forgiven it's not just this one time went to church said a prayer right threw two bucks in the plate and it was done it's a journey so when i say Mm -hmm. i'm there i've gone through this journey but the journey is where god had to teach me to trust him more and that's tough mm-hmm. because one of the first casualties, not the only casualty, but one of the first is that when you've been traumatized, you don't trust anybody. You don't trust God. Yeah. You don't trust people. You don't trust the church. You don't trust anything because everybody's betrayed you. And God had to teach me how to trust him first. God had to teach me mm-hmm. that I could 
really lean on his word. So I sought this. I didn't seek a denomination. I didn't seek a church. I didn't seek. I sought the Lord and said, God, everybody else has lied to me. Now I'm going to seek you and you teach me who you are. And I remember that hearing that expression, by faith, you can move a mountain. And I thought, Lord, what does that even mean? By a mustard seed, I can, what does that even mean? And the Lord said, Mark, can you move a pebble? I thought, sure. In precept by precept, the pebble became a stone. The stone became a boulder. Mm -hmm. The boulder became a hill. And many years later, God said, mm -hmm. let's go move that mountain. And I knew he meant forgive. Wow. And I said, Lord, it's too big. It's too hard. It's mm -hmm. too difficult. I have the right to be angry. I have the right. But that anger was consuming me. Even though my abuser didn't abuse my body for many years, his words still echoed in my head, oh, in my yeah. spirit. The abuse was the rudder that I steered my life by. I was a Christian. Mm -hmm. I preached in churches. But that abuse, that hurt was always about me. Yeah. And when God told me to move mm -hmm. that mountain, I said, God, how can I do it? And the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, I helped you move the pebble, the stone, the boulder, the rock. And now I'm going to help you move that that mountain. But again, it wasn't overnight. And there was a lot of doubts. And I asked God hard yeah. questions. And when you ask God hard questions, get ready for real answers. And he <laughs> yeah. spoke to me the same thing he spoke to you. I've called you from your mother's womb, mm -hmm. but the enemy has tried to destroy you. It's not an easy mm -hmm. answer, but it was the honest mm -hmm. answer. No. Yeah. So, so good. And I know that that's an encouragement to somebody listening today. Uh, people are dealing with so much anxiety right now and the trauma of their wounds and uh, they don't know where the answers lie, but it's through people like you who have walked the journey that we can find the answer and uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. Paul and Brenda Crouch here, baby. We have great plans coming up. <laughs> we do. We're here in Anaheim at our beautiful studio that God has provided, but what do we have coming up? We've got amazing content coming up that we're actually very excited about. We just finished season four, and we have plans to do some broadcasting from around the world, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, and God's opening doors for us. Amen. But they say you have not mm -hmm. because you ask not. Mm -hmm. And in four years, we have never asked for a donation or any yeah. kind of support and now we are. It's our heart to see that media is done right and that we give God glory for everything. And we just are following the call and we're doing it honest. And uh, we hope that you will catch the vision and ride this wave with us and know Amen. that it, God is gonna continue to pour more and more out as we follow in obedience to him. Amen. Go to Brenda's website. There's all kinds of resources there for giving. God bless you. BrendaCrouch.com. Well, we're back with Mark Sowersby. And Mark, your story is really heart-wrenching and inspiring at the same time. It's incredibly powerful. But I would like to really speak to the fact, I'd like for you to speak to the fact that telling your story is part of your freedom. I mean, victims are shamed. They are told to be quiet. They're manipulated. And oftentimes people don't understand the need to come step into the light and tell the truth of your story. Why was writing your book and telling your testimony such an important part, not just for your audience, but also for you? Well, when you get to share your story, you get set free, right? I believe that when we speak, when we share, it comes out. And when you keep yeah. it inside, it, it like just continues to eat away. So when somebody yeah. hears you and believes you, what a power oh, there is in that. Come on. Having, having defenders, having people that, that hear your story and support you. So I shared my story first because yeah. I believe God told me to. And more, that's, that's the center of why. But also to find that freedom. I didn't want to keep it in. You know, being a male, oftentimes males, we don't share this part. Many males have been hurt as I have been hurt, abused. And men mm -hmm. tend to try to bury it. We try to ignore it. We try to say it, it didn't happen uh, to us. And I'm sure there's yeah. lots of people who do that, not just men. But so to share mm -hmm. my story, to say, listen, I'm a regular person. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm, I am not perfect in any of these things. 
But this story right. uh, cannot contain just in me because it was it was trapping me. So by surrendering right. it and hearing, sharing it, it's kind of set me free. It's kind of let me uh, yeah. have the hope that that comes with sharing, sharing with others to let God be glorified. Amen. Oftentimes people think, well, if you're forgiven, then why do you have the need to tell the story? And I think that you've made some really important points, but the community isn't always receptive. Uh, how was it for you when you came out with your, your story and, and you first wrote the book for like your family? Or, yeah, you know, I, I got go? some pushback from, from some people. Um, my family was supportive of me to share my story, uh, but there's others outside. Really what I get pushback on is people say, why do I have to forgive? Why do I have to forgive that mm -hmm. person? And they kind of look at me going, why are you telling me to forgive? Why, what makes your story mm -hmm. better? I don't want to forgive. Well, I told nobody to forgive. God does. God tells us to forgive. So mm -hmm. when I tackled the story of abuse and trauma, I was really honest with it and saying, just because I forgave doesn't mean I don't seek justice. Just because I forgave doesn't mean I, yeah. I forget. I know forgive and forget. Just because I forgave yeah. doesn't mean that I just still That's don't good. want healthy boundaries. Just because I forgave does mm -hmm. not mean that I still don't have to forgive almost every day. You know, and I know, so it's that journey that I wanted to share because I, you know, I went to church, I heard forgive, let go, let by, bygones be bygones. Well, somebody invaded my, my innocence. They, they stole oh. my, from me my pound of flesh. If tell mm -hmm. me to forget that mm -hmm. would be not logical. So, how can I forgive right. that and still be in the process? So, yeah, I got a little pushback, but mostly because I share what Christ said. You know, and the importance of sharing yeah. what Christ said is this victory in that. Mm -hmm. I really believe that stories like yours, like mine and so many others, are what will help the church to equip in this season as we move forward in in the deeper levels of healing because you know mark i think that uh it, especially in the western culture we're just so conditioned to want to run from our pain sure. that we begin to mask and we begin to uh project an image and we fight uh the lie that that's and the and the conflict that's happening within our own broken brokenness in our soul by uh, putting on an act. And, and we could be doing that very sincerely, but it really takes acknowledging the truth to be set free. We have to acknowledge it. That doesn't mean we want to stay trapped in it. But, and, and so I think that it really triggers, would you say this uh, as well, that it triggers people's fears and they get uncomfortable. They don't, it's kind of like, you know, when somebody, when there's a death and, and they, and we just don't know what to say, we would rather just either ignore or we say the wrong things and we're insensitive. And these are people that are saying things from total inexperience and ignorance. So, you know, how do we be sensitive to the need to come out of hiding and to heal. Well, I think a couple of things happen there. First of all, like we talked in the last segment, you know, the defense mechanisms that we build. And oftentimes when we've had these traumas, mm -hmm. we, def we the defense mechanism we build is to be accepted. So we become all things to all people by denying who we really are. If I need to be the clown that day, I'll be the clown. If I need to be the jock wow. that day, I'll be the jock. Whatever I need to be, do to find yeah. acceptance by losing who I really am. Mm -hmm. So that's a makeup and a defense mm -hmm. mechanism because we know how broken we are and we don't want anybody else to see that. So when it does get exposed, the fear, the fear of that saying, they're really going to know, they're really going to know and maybe blame me or make me feel, feel as bad as I already do about it. So I would say, yeah, that's the first mm -hmm. thing. Uh, the enemy tries to lie to us and say, we're the only one. You're the only person that's been abused. You're the only one that's gone through a, an untimely death. You're the only one that's gone through a, an addiction or a pain. So that's the first thing I would say. The second thing, I think, is that the church needs to listen. You know, the Bible talks about mm -hmm. uh, the heart comes out of the man's mouth or a person's mouth. And we need to hear people and let them have room to express. We're so quick to preach forgiveness, and it rightfully so. And it's noble, and it's right. it's a part of God's word to forgive. But sometimes yes. we got to give people the process and let them say, you know what, God, I'm angry. You know, God, I'm sad. God, I'm mm -hmm. disappointed. God, I'm fearful. And as we give God people the process to go through that, God can meet them in each one of those journeys. So I say that yeah. you know, we, we, we hide it because we're afraid of it. 
And then when it rises up, we don't know what to do with it. We want to put on that protection again and bury it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the church just says, forgive and forget sometimes. And we go, no, I, I, mm -hmm. I'll never forget how bad that rape was. I'll never forget being locked right. in a van and having other men rape me. I won't forget the piercing of a screwdriver that went through my flesh or the cigarettes that were burnt mm -hmm. on my feet. I'll never forget that. But I can mm -hmm. still forgive it by the grace of God. And having yeah. a true understanding mm -hmm. that forgiveness for me is meaning that I put it into God's hand, a righteous and just God. Amen. And that righteous and just God walks us through the process right. of healing. It's from glory to glory. As we look into the mirror of his glory, as it says in the book of Second Corinthians, that it's in that place that is like a mirror to us right. in his glory that in the presence of Almighty God, that we are transformed from the inside out. How important is uh, vulnerability to you? And, and how does that look like the picture of Christ? Uh, because telling your story from a place of rage and anger is maybe the, you know, the first step of someone coming free, but it's not really, uh, that's not the power right. of our story. The power is in the, the ability to be vulnerable but in the power of forgiveness. So can you speak to that? Sure. I, again, I'm blessed. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak about the glory of God, because that's what really lifted me up. This story is not an abusive story. Mm -hmm. It's not a story about trauma. Right. It's a story about journey of okay. God coming to me and, mm -hmm. and bringing me out of that miry clay and setting my foot upon the rock. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about when Jacob mm -hmm. wrestled with an angel all night and he wrestled and he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And the angel said, what's your name? And we know Jacob in the Old Testament meant deceiver and liar. And he said, now you have a new name. It's Israel. And in, in the NIV, it says, because you've wrestled with God and yeah. you've wrestled with man, and now you're an overcomer. And in a sense, the, the deceiver wrestled with God and he became an overcomer. The process to take me from victim to victory, the process to take me from broken to whole, mm -hmm. the, pro the process. And that's what God became. He became my my. Abba Father. God became the shield about mm. me. He became the still small voice in the wilderness. He became my peace. Mm. He became my righteousness. He is the lifter of my head yeah. and the lover of my soul. And that was hard because mm. I was so trapped by the abuse. But inch by inch, precept by precept, one piece at a time, that yeah. mustard seed I gave to God. And God moved the mountain by me giving that mustard seed mm. of love and it would grow and mature. So those identities that once tried to trap me, that I was broken and ugly and foolish and ha had nothing valuable to give to anybody. I was dirt. I literally thought I was dirt. Yeah, right, right. But God set us free. Mm -hmm. And again, it's still a process. Amen. God, and I wish I could Amen. say it was all going. A continual. But God's bigger. But God's bigger. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And it's, that's the miracle. That is the miracle. So Mark, your book is called Forgiving the Night, the Nightmare. That's correct? right. Forgiving the Nightmare. And uh, tell us, tell us how we find your book and, and also how can we find you if, if uh, someone wants to have sure. you come speak? Sure. The best way to contact with me is to go to our website, forgivingthenightmare.com. You can email me there, at Mark mm -hmm. at Forgiving the Nightmare. Uh, so forgivingthenightmare.com, there there's a link to my book. You can buy my book from there. Or you can go on Amazon, Amazon, look up Forgiving the Nightmare, and you can purchase my book there. And it'd be a real honor and blessing for me to be able to uh, connect with you through my book and make the Lord be glorified. Awesome. Well, we sure do appreciate you, friend. And it's just such an honor to be able to tell your story and the goodness of God in the midst of such incredible pain. Um, in the next minute, could you just give an encouragement to someone that's watching today who's been dealing with hopelessness? Uh, sure. You know, uh, the enemy is a liar and he wants to lie and say, you're the only one. You're the only person that's dealt, as I said earlier. And that lie becomes so loud and you are too ashamed or too afraid to share our pain. But God's there for us. And he's given us great groups. He's given us organizations and counselors and, and people to come beside us on our journey. The first lie is that you're alone, yeah. but you're not. There are people, not perfect people, but there are many people who have walked where you've walked yeah. through addiction and pain and sorrow and abuse that want to lend their love, lend their support, lend their wisdom to see God 
be glorified and you be set free in Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for being a guest today. Again, it's my honor. Thank you for having me. I'm really, truly blessed for being here. We'll do it again. And friends, I want to thank you for being a part of this conversation. I know that you were deeply encouraged. Come again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.